what you personally prefer. What would make life better for me? You say that as a one-celled organism. You say that as the little ant that is moving across the sidewalk. You say that as the full-blown human. This point of consciousness that I accept as me is having exposure to life, which is causing me, no matter what that point of consciousness is, even if it's a cell in your magnificent body, causing me to know what I prefer, what would be an improvement for me. New desires born constantly at all levels of consciousness. That's what the evolution of all species is about. So this rocket of desire emanates from you. You don't even have to put words to it. Your mic is always on and you are emanating these rockets of desire. And as this rocket of desire moves forward, forward in terms of manifestation, the source energy part of you, who is always part of you, the source energy part of you receives that request and becomes it immediately. Becomes the vibrational equivalent of the improvement that your life has caused you to ask for. And that's the moment that you then have a responsibility to yourself, if you are a seeker of feeling good, to now keep up to speed with that new rocket that the inner being part of you has just embraced and become. Did you follow that? When you're sick and you ask for wellness, the non-physical part of you becomes weller than it was before you were sick and holds you to new standards of wellness, which you usually don't measure up to because after all, you're sick. You're aware of how you feel. You're aware of what's going on. And so, and so often, instead of being a vibrational match to the improvement that your life has just caused you to become, you are mostly standing in your awareness of what you don't want, holding yourself without meaning to through your observation of what currently is manifested in vibrational resistance to the improvement that you've just asked for. And that is the basis of all emotion. If you don't have enough money, you ask for more and the larger part of you becomes more prosperous. But if you keep beating the drum of not having enough money, you continue to deprive yourself of the improved financial condition that you've already set into motion. Now, does this make sense to you? Do you understand that vibrationally there is a part of you that you keep setting a new standard? You keep raising the bar. You keep finding a new vibrational set point, And that if you don't keep up with it, then the crevasse or the gap between who you consistently are through your attitudes through your habit of thought, through the friends you hang out with, through the blogs you read. In other words, you're constantly expanding. The question is, are you keeping up with the expansion? And if you're feeling great, if you're emotionally happy, if you're tuned in, if you're turned on to life, if you're flying high, if you're full of exhilaration, if you feel passion and love and appreciation often, if you are in that tuned in, tapped in, turned on attitude much of your life experience, then that means you're keeping up to speed. You're keeping up to speed. You're keeping up to speed. It means you're thriving on all fronts. But if you're grumpy, if you're cranky, if you're guarded, if you're fearful, if you are, if you are not feeling good, then that means that you're expanding vibrationally, but you're not doing a very good job of keeping up with your own expansion, which means you're creating a tension within you that doesn't feel good. So when we say to you, your emotion is your primary manifestation that you're reaching for, most people say, give me the new house, give me the new car, give me the improved body, give me the financial abundance that I'm looking for. Give me the means to travel the world and do what I want. Give me the means to quit that crap job I've got and leave behind that ornery employer that I've got. Give me the means to walk away from anything and everything that I don't want and then I'll be happy. And we say, it doesn't work that way. That's backwards. You've got to find the happy place first. And humans say, you find the happy place. <laughs> You be happy under these conditions. You live with what I've got going on and you be happy. And we say, we are. We are living with what you've got going on and we are happy. And the only reason that you ever feel unhappy is because you're not up to speed with that, which we are. That is the basis of unhappiness. You think your unhappiness is because you don't have what you want. You think it's because you don't have the car, you don't have the lover, you don't have the bodily condition, you don't have the money. You think that's why you're not happy. And we say, that's just the excuse you're using to not be up to speed with who we are and not be up to speed with who we are is why you're not happy, you see. 
you see? So when you get it, do you get it? That you have this vibrational relationship that equals your mood. And if you will make this vibrational relationship your primary concern, if you will make it what you care about, if you will stop saying world or universe or God or Abraham or mother or lover or employer or employee or friend, if you will stop saying, give me something that makes me feel good so that I can feel good because I want to feel good and after all you sort of owe it to me to give me something to make me feel good because I want to feel good. If you'll stop saying that, meaning that, feeling that, and instead you'll say, it is my responsibility to conjure a framework of thoughts that causes me to feel a little better now and a little better now and a little better now. If you will show yourself your ability to manifest the emotion without demanding a condition to change first, now you've got it. Because once you achieve the vibrational stability of feeling good anyway, the condition has to change. So we've been describing this to you in a lot of different ways. And our most recent analogy, it's our favorite so far, won't be the last, but so far, is that as you are sending these rockets of desire, oh, and if you could see the stream that flows from you, you'd be very proud of the contrasting life you're living. Because when you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. When you know what you do want, you know what you don't want. When you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. So constant rockets of desire, constant vibrational emanation from you. Going into what we are calling this vibrational reality, a vortex of creation. It's where your inner being stands. It's where your inner being stands as a constant improvement of that which you are. So this vibrational version of you, you know there's a vibrational version of everything before a creation occurs, before what you call this real life knock on wood manifestation occurs. So this vortex of creation is where everything that you've been asking for, oh, better stated, everything that you have become dwells. A vibrational creation, a vibrational beingness to which you are feeling constant feedback. When you're up to speed with it, you feel great. When you're not up to speed with it, you feel not so great to the degree that you're not up to speed with it. So when you understand that you have the ability to close that gap, our favorite story about this is a woman who had pain in her body from arthritis. And she said, Abraham, I hear you. I believe you. I want to know this. I want to be able to do this. But how can I feel emotionally positive when my body hurts me so? When I'm in physical pain, how do I find a good feeling, a good feeling emotion? And we said, you have to separate the physical manifestation from the emotion. You have to take, in those days, we were calling it an emotional journey. The emotion has to matter more. In other words, we said, you've got a choice. You can be in pain and be afraid, or you can be in pain and feel hope. The pain going away right now, this red hot minute, may not be an option. Unless you can get someone to shoot you up with some deadening agent. The pain is there. The question is, what is your emotional response to it? And if your emotional response is only based upon what is, then your emotional response is going to be one of fear. But if your emotional response is based upon something other than what is, which it must be, otherwise how can you move beyond what is? If what is has your undivided attention, then you are not a deliberate creator. You are a regurgitator. You are a knee jerker observer, a defaulter. You are a creation, a creator by default. You are someone who observes and has a knee-jerk response. And you are also like most of the human population on your planet because that's what most are doing. But when you understand that you have another option, that you can choose an emotion that is apart from the current reality that you are living, now you have the ability to deliberately change the current reality. Because the reality, the manifestation of your body and of everything that has anything to do with you will shift in reverence to your, in resonance to your vibrational attitude. Make sense to you? 
So if you can feel an emotion that by human standards is illogical, because your logic says this is what's happening, I should be having this kind of response to what's happening. And we say, if that response feels bad, then you've got to choose another option. And most humans say, then give me something better to respond to, and I'll have a better response. And we say, doesn't work that way. You have to find the response first, and then the reason that you're looking for will follow every single time. We're not kidding you. Because once you achieve vibrational alignment with who you have become, with all that you've become, with the vibration of who you really are, everything else has to follow. That's creation. That's deliberate creation. That's how this world works. That's how this universe works. That's how every single thing works. There's not a shred of evidence that defies that in any way. There is no exception to what we have just said to you you just have to decide that you care about how you feel more than just feeling in response to what you think is and now you've got it and as you look around your planet there are a whole lot of people on a whole lot of subjects that have figured that out because they don't let what is worry their pretty little head they don't let what is matter at all they have decided that what is doesn't mean diddly squat because it's only a snapshot of what you've been doing vibrationally, what you've been doing emotionally, over which you have complete control. So we know it's not the easiest thing to have been in the habit of observing unwanted things and to have yourself in a sort of jam. And now to have some smart aleck that has no body, who has no rent to pay, who doesn't even have to go looking for a meal today, say to you, oh, you create your own reality. And all you have to do is find an emotion that feels good. We know it must be sort of hard to take when you're dealing with some of the stuff you're dealing with. We're just saying, we're just saying that once you get hold of this and once you figure out that you can control the way you feel because you have the ability to find a better feeling thought and a better feeling thought and a better feeling thought. But most important, if we can convince you that if you do the vortex work first, which means find the emotion, align with who you are, that the vortex will fix everything. The vortex will give you the manifestation. It will bring the evidence because the vortex is gathering the cooperative components. And we just want to say to you, we love you very much. We just want to say to you, we love you very much. We just want to say to you, we love you very much. You are the only uncooperative component that needs to come to the party. <laughs> and when you become a cooperative component, which means you find some way to adjust your vibration so that you're not so freakishly resistant. When you care about how you feel and you adjust your vibration, the vortex will take you in. It's the way that it works. You don't have to power the engine. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to figure it all out. You're not here to prove worthiness to anyone about anything. You just have to chill out. You just have to let go of those things that have been bothering you. You just have to find a way to stop offering a vibration that holds you apart from this vortex. And when you let go, when you surrender, when you give up, when you stop the battle, when you stop the struggle, when you stop looking at the evidence that supports why you're standing in the place you don't want to stand, when you stop doing that and stop keeping it active, the vortex will take you in and anything and everything that you've been looking for will manifest in your experience and others will watch you in this beautiful manifestation that follows you on every subject in the world and they'll say what in the world have you got going on how is it that you get everything you want with such ease what happened to your struggle and your trying and you say I gave it up they'll say well when did this laziness come over you <laughs> when when did you stop trying to be a citizen of the human race and justify your existence? And you say, when I decided to feel good and when I decided that it mattered most, everything shifted for me. And then they'll just call you selfish and walk away. <laughs> and we say, yes, indeed, you must be selfish enough to care about how you feel. So you got that, didn't you? It makes perfect sense to you, doesn't it? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next